An officer responded to a missing person report, ironic, because the oldest son of the wife had run away. Redditors who were the final people to see a missing person, have they been found? And how has their disappearance affected you? Hey bro, what's up, you excited for today's story time? I hope you are, because I'm pretty hyped. Do you boy Andrew a favor and hit that like button, and if you're feeling extra generous, then hit that subscribe button. If you do then I'll give you access to my Ferrari. Let's start these stories. They were found. Committed suicide in a motel room. I was ignorant and did not realize he was reaching out for help. That realization after the fact hit me hard. I saved his last email to me and read it as a reminder every so often. Saw him at a club with some friends on a night out, one of my friends was hooking up with him on and off, so they had usual unidrama going on. He left after that to go back home or something. The next morning he was found dead, the last ever video was him getting off a bus, and then there was no other CCTV footage of him, after he walked a bit further down the road. They investigated our unit for months and months, but no leads were ever found. His death was never solved. It's really unsettling to this day. I was the last person to see a patient of mine before his brother locked him in his basement for a few weeks. The patient was eventually found. I felt really privileged to have helped. By chance, he gave me his brother's address as a forwarding address, and the police went looking for him there. When found, my guy was dehydrated and had a broken jaw, but ultimately did well. His brother is currently on a secure psychiatric ward. I worked in a very small public library, years ago. There was a young man, maybe 8 to 10 years older than me that came in every few days for several months. He was very intelligent and extremely interesting. We talked often. One day he came in, we talked for a while, and he asked me to make sure he had returned everything he had checked out. I did, and before he left he thanked me for always helping him and being nice, etc. He walked up the street to his apartment and shot himself. I always wished that I had realized he was saying goodbye. A friend in college had left a party we were at because he had remembered he left his jacket in another person's dorm. Nobody heard from him the following day, most figured he was drunk and just passed out somewhere. I even left a voicemail on his phone like where are you? Lol hope you aren't dead. Days turned into weeks, there were campus-wide manhunts with hundreds of volunteers. His body finally turned up in an electrical closet six weeks later. Accidental electrocution. I am positive me and my little brother were the last ones to see my father alive. We were waiting for the school bus and saw him driving back home with a strange look on his face. We waved to him, but he didn't wave back. After that he went missing. A couple of weeks later, he was found dead hanging from a tree. It was a suicide. It is a scene in my head that gets replayed in my head often, and it hurts me to imagine whatever might have been going through his head. I miss him so much. I don't know if I was the last person to see her alive, but one of the last. Lori Hacking and her husband Mark Douglas Hacking came into my cell phone store two days before she found out about how he had lied to her about pretty much everything in his life and he killed her and their unborn child. They were both awesome people. She was happy and bubbly and he was a really nice guy. I came in from the weekend and there was a missing poster on our store door for Lori, it was really weird seeing that she was missing after just selling them cell phones and a plan. I reached out to the number and told them that her and Mark had been into the store two days before she went missing. I had to meet with the local police and an FBI agent. They had to look at the paperwork we had done, the video for the store, and interview all of the employees. The weirdest thing is that Mark came into the store after killing her and asked me a question about their cell phone plan after killing his wife and dumping her body. I was one of the last people to see a kid who lived across the street before she was kidnapped. Our neighbors across the street were raising their grandchild because their child, kid's parent, was on drugs. The kid was about 6 to 8 years younger than me, and I used to babysit her sometimes, and she would come over and play with me and my siblings. When I was around 14 and she was around 8, several men broke into the house and kidnapped her. I had babysat her the night before, and I can't remember if she was home alone or if one of the grandparents was there. The police found her about 10 to 12 days later. 
Her mother owed a lot of money for drugs, and so some of the drug dealers tracked down her kid and kidnapped her to try to get the mother to pay them. I never learned the details of what happened while she was kidnapped, and she has gotten therapy and is now married with kids. Edit. She's doing very well and has a happy life. Sorry everyone, I didn't phrase things well. Yes, he was found. Back in high school, a guy I knew disappeared and the cops interviewed my friends and I. Apparently a note was found on his bed that read, give us $1,000 or you'll never see your son again, and that's all it said, no contacts or drop off location or anything. They found the guy three days later walking around the mall. He had been hiding behind an Alberts and dumpster the entire time and got bored when he decided to walk around a nearby mall. Idiot. Edit. Yes, he faked the note. He even did it in the style of cutting out letters from a newspaper and gluing them to form the sentence. I was the last person to see a patient admitted with major depression after his divorce, just found out he didn't receive custody of his kids. The senior doctor decided he was low risk because he had no significant mental health history, didn't disclose any specific plans to hurt himself, and appeared very well and optimistic. When asked about his occupation during the interview, he vaguely mentioned he worked for the law. So he had unescorted day leave to pick up some toiletries, I held the door on his way out. Never saw him again. Two weeks later a stranger found his car on the side of the road, bullet in his head. Turned out he was a police officer and had access to a gun to shoot himself. In response to a PM about this whenever I post about other people, I change details e.g. gender, situational aspects, etc. to equivalencies so that they are 100% definitely not recognizable for privacy on their behalf. They wouldn't be able to recognize themselves, so it's very unlikely I've met a family friend who sounds familiar here. So sorry to anyone who have been affected by similar experiences. This person didn't go missing, but I was the last person to see him alive. My best friend and I were drinking on my porch in college. It was about 3.30 am and I told him I was going to bed because I had to work the next day. He begged me to have another drink with him, but I insisted that I needed to get to sleep. The next morning I woke up to my roommate screaming for me to come downstairs. I ran down and my friend had hung himself while sitting down under the porch railing. We cut him down, did CPR even though we knew he was gone already. It was the most traumatic things I've witnessed and had really affected my life. I pieced together things from the night like the rope he hung himself with was his friend's dog leash that we searched for a long time for and could not find. We think he hid the leash as a premeditated event. Just thinking that he begged to spend just a little more time with me, but I refused really hurts. Edit. Thanks for the gold. Since this is getting a lot of attention, I want to say that if you notice any odd behavior from friends or jokes about someone harming themselves, please take it seriously. Oftentimes it is a cry for help. I'm saddened to hear of so many of you who have had to deal with the same thing. I would hug you all if I could. Please 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 reach out to me if you need to chat. Love. I was 8 years old when I went with my parents to drop off my little sister for visitation with her biological father. The next morning, my dad woke me up for school and said she didn't come back that night. My dad went to Denver, we knew the bio dad had family in this area, for the weekend to go try to look for them, and contacted the Denver PD. My local PD didn't assist in finding her at all. In fact the DA told my parents that you can't abduct your own child, despite the fact that my parents had full custody. I will never forget the day that we got the call that she was found. I was with my mom and two of my other sister at the grand opening of the Cabela's in my hometown, when my mom answered her phone and burst into tears. She was in a small town in Michigan, had been homeschooled by the wife of her bio dad, and was going by her middle name. An officer responded to a missing person report, ironic, because the oldest son of the wife had run away. Someway, somehow, the officer knew something was wrong and looked into the situation. The whole situation was much more difficult on more sister than me. She was basically two years behind in school when she came back, and the principal of our elementary school wanted to put her in first grade, rather than third which is what she should have been in at the time. But they ultimately kept her in third grade with our sister, the two are 10 days apart in age and have been best friends their whole life. 
she got tutoring and managed to get back on track. She is currently in her senior year and looking forward to college in the fall. Thanks for watching. What did you think of the story time? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more story times.